to execute, um, they execute it. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, a lot of things to acknowledge. Uh, but I'm just thankful that we we're able to get the victory. Um, the guys fought. Um, they fought together in a hostile environment. Um, boy, that's that's good to see. Um, look forward to moving on. We don't take that for granted. We realize we're in the single elimination tournament. Um, eight became four, and we're glad to be among the four. Questions? Mike, the end of the game, going all the way on third down, taking what was there, uh, run pass option. We play to win. We were throwing. Mike, your kicker never misses in the postseason. Can you speak to his demeanor? You know, um, he's the same guy every day, really, uh, regardless of circumstance. Um, and he's been that since we acquired him. Uh, we're not surprised when he when he performs well. Man, um, you know, I, I think the significant part of it is that they went down the field on us on the first possession, and the guys didn't blink. Um, they would be given credit for that. Um, that might have been the first time we gave up a touchdown on the first possession of a, of a game all season. Um, but, boy, I like the look in their eye, um, the resolve. And, um, but it was more than that, man. They, they, they took that look, they took that resolve, and they went out and, and continued to play uh, and played at a high level. Mike, what about the offensive line of Le'Veon Bell for the second straight week? He sets a playoff franchise rushing record. You know, um, they're, they're playing in rhythm. They are. Um, we're getting hats on hats. Le'Veon's doing an awesome job. Um, you know, it, they need no endorsement from me. Um, they've been balling pretty at a high level. You know, um, we, we, we were going to, you know, like I told somebody or maybe told you guys at the early portions of the week, uh, we wanted to minimize our exposure to him, but we realized that there were certain environmental things, um, not at the expense of that. We weren't going to kick the ball out of bounds uh, and give him field position at the 40. Um, after that first squib, it didn't get through. The guy fielded the ball. The guy, I think, to the 45-yard line. We figured we'd make him beat us as opposed to uh, give him real estate. So we kicked it away, and the guys did a great job covering No. No, I mean it was 56 yards. You sent him off. Yeah, it was just a it was a tactical move on my part that you know was unsuccessful. Mike, can you speak to the comfort level of kicking field goals inside the red zone instead of getting the seven and how touching go that? That's not comfortable. It's not. You know, we we desire to score touchdowns. Can you talk about limiting Tyreek Hill's factor? You know, we got a lot of respect for that guy, man. Um, dynamic player, not only in special teams but on offense. Um, really limited a lot of the things that we wanted to do. Um, we had to make sure our edges were secure. We, we, we had to make sure that the perimeter of our defense was solid. And um, so we kind of reduced some of the things that we would normally do in an effort to ensure that. Um, I thought the guys just really did a good job of executing the plan in that regard. No, you know, we're in their environment, you know, without a use of a cadence in that circumstance. We, we wanted that drive to end positively. We got points. Um, it was too early in the game to draw the line in the dirt, um, you know, from my perspective at that point. You know, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a sharp young guy. Um, we were able to have a moment on the sideline after the penalty. Um, he realized that he made a mistake. Uh, he apologized for it. I said, hey, man, we got more plays to play. Uh, move on. Uh, and he did. He did rather quickly, and it's awesome because we needed him to. Um, you know, we're not trying to hurt anybody. We want to play within the rules. Um, but we, we didn't in that instance. Any final for Coach? Their fear of, excuse me, their fear of James Harrison caused that um, you know, they, they'd be better equipped to answer that than myself. Mike, any early thoughts about facing New England? Actually? None. All right, thanks, Coach. Boswell will be next. <coughs> uh, Ryan Clark played in two of those 16 championship games. He was undefeated. So you this watch is your, true. This watch, is true. You watch your old team tonight. We just heard from the chief cheerleader there, Mike Tomlin, as well. Uh, let's start at the beginning of this thing. Big Ben came out, didn't have the boot on. 
And he played just fine. Didn't we talk about this <laughs> last week? That's why I thought we'd rehash it Hey, listen, quick. we knew he wasn't going to wear that boot all week, <laughs> and we knew that he would play well, and he did. You take away that one throw in the red zone when it really was a run call, mm-hmm. and he saw Antonio Brown had man-to-man coverage and tried to get it to him. The interception by Eric Berry off of the tip. Ben played really well tonight. They just have to find ways to get touchdowns instead of field goals if you're going, going to beat the New England Patriots. Okay, tell me from the player's perspective that this was a thing of beauty because I watched it and there were times I might have yawned uh, because you got one team grinding it out. And Kansas City, despite what appeared were many chances, didn't ever really want to really uh, go for the jugular. They're very conservative. Well, if you look at Kansas City, this is the way they played all year. Mm-hmm. If you look at this team, they're conservative. Alex Smith is very smart with the ball. And you kind of wait for Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey to make a play. They didn't make those plays tonight, which is why you didn't see them ring up the scoreboard. All year, they've depended on this defense to keep people out of the end zone. Not necessarily keep them from moving the ball, mm-hmm. but to keep the score down. They were able to do that tonight. And they had an opportunity to tie the game. They tie it, but Eric Fisher gets the penalty, and now you have a tougher play. I think the huge play is it's third down, third and three. Mm -hmm. You need the first down. It's the two-minute warning, and you throw the ball because you know Big Ben and Antonio Brown have one of the best combos in the league. You roll, you give Big Ben a run-pass option. The thing you don't want to do is have an incomplete pass or a turnover. Mm -hmm. You believe in your guy enough. You see Antonio Brown come across the field, run past the linebacker, make a huge catch, and now the game is over. When you have these guys, these all-pro, Pro Bowl caliber players who have been there and done that, you give them those opportunities, and that's what Coach Tomlin and offense coordinator Todd Haley did. So to me, that's the huge play. And what I take away from this game, the guys went out and won it. We're waiting, Andy Reid, the other side of this thing, uh, the home team losing, both home teams losing today uh, in Divisional Sunday. Tell us how how big, not every coach would entrust his guys to do Mm -hmm. that. Third and three, hand it off, hope you get it, and if not, turn it over the defense. It's pretty standard formula. Uh, So how big is that for Tomlin to go ahead and let him do that. I mean, it's huge. Uh, it really is huge. And, you know, Andy Reid will probably talk about some of those things as he goes forward in his press conference. All right, we'll get back to that and we'll listen to Andy Reid. Good throw. Listen, compliments to the, to the Steelers. They were, they were the better team today. We, we had too many errors that we made. Uh, it's my responsibility to make sure those are right. And uh, we didn't do it. I'm still... Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you got to see what our football team's all about, the grit, and, um, you know, we came up short. So, uh, but they laid it all out there. Uh, we can learn from this. Uh, that's hard to hear right now, uh, but we can learn from it and be better for it next year. So that's the suddenness of this, um, of the playoffs. It's it's ended and, uh, and we move on. So, um we appreciate the fans and all the support that they gave us this season. Without you, you know, we wouldn't have gotten this far. So, um, and you were out there today. You stayed right to the end, and we appreciate every bit of that. Time's yours. Yeah, so, well, you know, the simple things. Uh, when two good football teams are playing each other, you, you obviously can't, you can't have uh, – penalties and things of that sort so um you know unfortunately we had down the stretch and fish got called for one that i you know i when you're playing a shorter player that, that can go either way i mean I've, i don't know about that I'm, I'm curious to see that on tape so um I, but that's what it is and and we move on so we're not making any excuses for anything but um, I don't want any of these guys hanging their head. They, 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 they're hurting right now, but they need to keep their head up and, and be proud of some of the things that they did. And defensively, you got to hold these guys to six field goals, even though the yardage total was high. Uh, was it kind of the way you played them? Like, were, you, were you happy with the way the scheme worked out? A lot of even boxes, that kind of thing. It felt like that part of it actually did work. Yeah, we kept, them, we kept them out of the end zone, which was a positive. Um, we stalled there offensively for a bit. We weren't getting much going in the second half, in the first half. Second half, things balanced out offensively and defensively where uh, offense was more productive, defense was getting stops. And uh, so the, the time of possession kind of balanced out there a little bit. But, um, you know, the, again, early. We, we've got to do a better job early. What's your but just, I know the game you said it, but did you feel pretty good about some of the calls you had? Was it more execution? Or, you 
hey, listen, you can always do better. Um, that's how I'm, I'm coming out of this. I'll go back and I'll analyze it all. And I always start with myself. And so uh, we, we've all got a piece of this, and uh, it starts with me. I'm the head football coach here. So, so Andy, did you give yourself any time at all to step back from this before you start processing the ball? Or? Well, I'll jump on it tomorrow and make sure that I look at it, um, if not sooner. So I just, uh, you know, and then, then we go from there. Then it's a new year, so you, you got to do your um, – Scheme evaluations and so on, and get get ready for the next for the off season and the next year. You guys got that third down in the third quarter yet to play, third and short. What's the process of getting that play in, and how can something like that happen at home? Yeah, it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. I, so I've I've got to get it in sooner and do a better job of that. Yeah. So you're not the one who talks to Alex. I've got to take care of that. Yeah, that's my responsibility. If you had. Uh, had to use the timeouts on offense, you might have been able to get them home there. Yeah. Yeah, we had two that we <clears throat> we used that we really didn't need to use. Uh, we shouldn't have had to, to have used. Uh, <clears throat> again, error on our part. So um, I'll take responsibility for that. But that's that was an error there. And, yes, we could have used them less down the, down the road there. I, I apologize if this was asked before I walked in. Travis lost his crew on that one play and got that penalty run. Something you've been working with him for a few years on. Yeah, you can't do that, right? So I mean, that's that's the obvious. So and you know, it, it followed a you know ball that he wasn't satisfied. You know, he felt like he should have caught. And then uh, th those are the things, the little things like that. When you're <clears throat> when you're playing here against good competition, uh, you can't have things like that. So. Um, and learn from that. A <clears throat> couple more guys. Oh, oh, yeah. What you think of Alex's day? You know, probably missed a few throws, made some that got dropped, and it's just. Hey, he battled, man. He battled. That, that's what that's what he does. Um, he stayed tough in there the first half. He took some shots in the first half, and uh, I thought he battled battled through those. Um, I mean, it was our play. We'd all like to have a play back somewhere. Uh, you know, when you when you don't win a game, I mean, that's how you you know that's how you feel and. And so uh, I can tell you, there's not a play he wouldn't like that back, but he, he battled, and, and really all of them battled and tightened it up the second half. He just can't wait quite that long to do that because it's a good football team. Did you ever imagine you could lose a playoff game without giving up a touchdown? Well, I hadn't thought about it less. Uh, uh, probably shouldn't have. Yeah, probably should have lost it. Yeah, I think the mental toughness of the team. Not you know, I'm not going to say they're the most talented team or that, but they're they're gritty men. They'll battle you. Um, backups come in. Um, you know, you saw it on the defensive line. You saw it on the linebackers. You you know, uh, guys in the secondary corner. I mean, these were guys that came in and played with offensive line when Zach came in and. He just saw guys buckle down and, and battle, man. And so uh, um, that's that's what they did. They did that today. And we just came up shorter than than we wanted to and that we normally do. Yeah, well, he had an all-pro season, right? So, I mean, he was voted in as a Pro Bowl player, an all-pro player. Um, that's the kind of season he had. He, he was the leader of the team, so... Uh, Boy, that's tough. You score multiple touchdowns, you don't give up any touchdowns, and you lose the game and your season is over. And now the worst home record in playoff history gets even worse. Two and six for the Chiefs at home. 1993, Joe Montana, the last quarterback to lead the Chiefs to a home victory. John Ryan. That is amazing. When you think of it, we, we think of the Steelers, playoff tough, always win. And the Chiefs at struggled to get by, whether, whether it was Marty Schottenheimer or Andy Reid now as they go through that. Where did, uh, in your estimation, the home team fall short in this one? Because there were chances to be yeah, had. It was about making plays when you had the opportunity. I can think back to multiple times that Travis Kelsey was open down the middle and he wasn't throwing the ball. Tyreek Hill in the red zone on the last drive wasn't found when he was wide open. And also, there were drops. There were drops that would have converted first downs that the Kansas City Chiefs didn't make. And when 
when your team is not running the football well, you need to find a big play with your big play people. And Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill weren't able to make that play. But you have to give the Steelers credit. They had a they had a plan. They had a design. They had a scheme to take those guys away. And for the most part, they were able to do that. Uh, you and I watched the two point conversion. We saw Eric Fisher, and, and we agree it's, it's foul. I got mauled. Yeah, it's foul. Uh, Travis Kelsey, as you might expect, did not think so. We will hear from him momentarily. Uh, AFC game was outdoors. We want to warm up. NFC indoors. <laughs> fight all year. You fight all game. Um, for it, for it to end like that, with the the ref literally taking it out of our hands, um, that hurts. You know, try and play this game with integrity, and you know, to the end of the whistle. And when um, refs want to take over the game and make it their own platform, you, there's nothing you can do about it. That, that, that wasn't a hold on my guy, Eric Fisher. And sure enough, I hope 7-2 doesn't go the entire offseason thinking it was his fault. That was, uh, that was hard flat out. Um, and uh, from there, you know, uh, we'll go into the next season and, um, and try not to let it in the, get in the refs' hands. But, you know, the other one's controlling the game. This is the most bitter loss you've ever I mean, it sucks. This sucks. It was an unbelievable play call. Last drives, Alex just drove us down there, fourth down after fourth down, making plays, making plays. The momentum's getting on our side, and then just get our jugulars ripped out because ref felt bad for James Harrison falling on the, the ground. Um, it's ignorance. The ref number 51 shouldn't even be able to wear a zebra jersey ever again. He shouldn't even be able to work a footlocker. Okay, guys. You guys have a good day. Thank right? you. So he's not over that yet. Uh, <laughs> it's fresh. It's still. It's, it's obviously fresh. We got, yeah, that, that wound's still open a little bit. Um, there's two lessons here. One, it, it looked to me that in, it, it's got to be egregious at that time of the game, right. and it fairly was. And I, I think it was. I think he got his hand up around his neck. James tried to dip him. It's a call that they have to make. And how many times you say, then they don't get it in a stage where it's in the ref's hands? Well, you know what? I feel Travis Kelsey in the sense that I understand the frustration, mm -hmm. right? You would like for them to not call that in that situation, but it's part of the game. The referees are in the first quarter. They're in the second. They're going to be there in the fourth in the waning seconds. That's part of the game. You do your best to not make it an issue, to not make it to where a call they can make can win or lose a game, but it's part of football. That's why we're taught technique. It's why you're taught to play the game a certain way. It's unfortunate that the call went that way. I think the refs made the right call, and it's part of the game, but I still understand his frustration. Man had his jugular ripped out. It's going to take and him off. He can't wear that thing at Foot Locker either. <laughs> I like Foot Locker. Never going to I wonder if he can work at a ladies Foot Locker, though. Ever. Uh, plenty more from Ryan Clark. You know what? He went to LSU. They're relentless. They'll stay here until the job is done right after this. <laughs>